Okay, wanted to make a quick video just showing you how to uh, make a frequency distribution uh, and a histogram where you need to bin the data into classes. Okay, so, uh, so I have a bunch of different variables here. I think the one I'm going to focus though on is this one, the length of fish data. So we'll pretend that somebody went out and uh, measured the lengths of a bunch of fish in a particular lake and that they got this data. So if you wanted to make a frequency distribution out of this and maybe potentially a histogram as well uh, using a pivot table, here's how you would do that. So you select the column, then you go to insert, and then you could click on pivot table. And you can see that <clears throat> uh, it's going to make a pivot table out of the data in the column that we selected. Here you can choose where you want that pivot to be, table to be stored. So you can either store it in a new worksheet or you can store it in the worksheet that you're already working on. That's what I'm going to do, but it's up to you. Either way is fine. If you're going to store it in the, in the worksheet you're already working on, then you need to select a cell where uh, you want Excel to place the pivot table. So I'm going to just select this cell. It doesn't matter which cell it is as long as it doesn't have any data in it. Okay, then I'm going to hit OK. So now what we need to do is we need to take this variable that we're interested in, our length of fish, and we'll make some rows out of it. And what this does now is it lists all of the unique lengths that were measured. Um, then we want to take that same variable and we want to count up how many fish were 12 centimeters long and how many fish were 18 centimeters long. So we take this same variable and we drag it down to the, va to the values area. Now you'll notice that here it's not actually, Excel is not <clears throat> counting up the number of fish in each category. To get it to do that, what we need to do is click on this little menu, click on the value field settings, and then change it from sum to count, right? and then hit OK. And now it'll count up uh, the number of fish in each individual category. So there was one fish that was 12 centimeters long. And there were four fish that were 30 centimeters long and so forth. Now, you might want to group this data into classes. Instead of having each individual observation be its own class, you might want to group it into classes of, say, uh, you know, the first class might go from 12 to 20, and the next one might go from uh, 21 to 28 or whatever. So to get Excel to do that, you need to select one of these rows like that and then you can either go to group selection and that'll open up this dialog box or another way to get to the same place would be to just right click the row and then go to group and that'll open up that same dialog box and then the point is here you can tell Excel where you want your classes to start in this case the smallest observation was 12 so starting at 12 would be fine and then here where it says by, that's where you're going to put your class width. So if you want the class width to be, say, 8, then you would uh, change that to 8. And then you hit OK. And Excel will group all of those lengths into classes. Okay, And then it'll give you the counts of the number of fish in each class. So there were two fish that were somewhere between 12 and 19 centimeters and five fish between 28 and 35 centimeters. Now, the next thing I want to point out is, if you look at these classes, uh, they all seem to, everything seems to be in order at first glance. Uh, this first class stops at 19 and the next class picks up at 20. That one stops at 27 and the next one picks up at 28. And so on and so forth. Until you get to this last class, right? The second to last class stops at 67. And so you'd, you'd expect the next class to pick up at 68, but instead it goes all the way to 76. So what's happening here is that there is a missing class that goes from 68 to 75 and there were no fish in this original data set that were between 68 and 75 centimeters long. And so uh, Excel just doesn't bother to even put that class in the table. Now that's kind of a problem if you're, if you're wanting to create a histogram. If you're wanting to create a histogram, uh, you need all of the classes present, even if there are no observations in that class, because it'll affect the shape of the distribution. 
So in order to get the histogram to have the correct shape, uh, which is important information, you need all of the classes to be present. So here's how we're going to get uh, Excel to do that. The first thing you want to do is come down here to Rows and click on this variable and go to Field Settings. And then inside of this dialog box, you're going to click on the Layout and Print tab. And down here, you want to check this box that says Show Items with No Data. So we click that and hit OK. And then you notice that suddenly this new class that wasn't listed before shows up in our frequency table. Now the next thing you want to do is you want to give this blank value a value of zero. Uh, and so the way that you're going to do that is uh, select any of these, right click it, and then go down to pivot, uh, pivot table options. And down here under format where it says for empty cells show, you're going to want it to show, show zero. Okay, so then you hit OK. And now it's giving that class a count of zero. Okay. Now from there, if you want to get rid of this blank row and this greater than 84 row, you can do that by clicking this down arrow and just unselecting those two uh, boxes. And now you've got a pretty good looking uh, frequency distribution. You can change these. So th this uh, th was the length of fish. So you can change the title to length of fish if you want. And then you, this you could call frequency or whatever. You can also uh, select all of this and then uh, center it if you like the way it looks better when you center the data or whatever. But but this is a, this is a good frequency table now. Uh, and so then finally, if you wanted to make a histogram out of this, uh, all you'd have to do is select the table, go to insert, go to this bar chart. Don't go to the histogram. Excel makes weird, it does weird stuff with histograms. So go to the go to the bar chart thing and uh, and make a bar chart out of that. And you'll notice that it puts that category, the 68 to 75, uh, in the chart, which is good. That's what we want it to do. Now, histograms shouldn't have any spaces between the bars. So in order to uh, get rid of the spaces, you want to select these bars, right click, and say Format Data Series and then just take that gap width down to zero. I actually don't love the way this looks. <laughs> I would rather have the gap width at like 2% because then at least I can see lines uh, between the boxes. I, I just think that looks a little bit nicer. That's just a personal preference. Uh, and that's it. I mean, you can modify, right? You can delete this thing. You can hide this thing. You can hide this other thing. Uh, you can come up here and add some data values. That'll put the numbers above each uh, bar in the histogram, which is kind of nice. You can put axis titles on there. So you can call this axis here the frequency. Whoop. So you can call this the frequency. You can, you can call this the uh, length in centimeters and you can give it a title okay and you can modify it further right you can come over here change the style do other stuff but um but that will do it for this particular tutorial uh one thing that i'll mention i guess before i go is that you're not always going to have this issue where you have uh where you have classes with no individuals in that class. If we were to make, for example, a frequency table out of this data, I don't think we would have the same issue. So let me just show you real quick. So we select it, go to insert, pivot table. I'm going to place it right here. Okay, and I'll drag this down. Make sure that I'm counting the values. And group this into bins. Maybe I'll start these bins at zero, 
and group them uh, and have a bin width of 0 0.5. Okay, and you'll notice here you don't have any empty bins, right? This one, the first bin stops at 0.5, the next one starts at 0.5. This one stops at 1, the next one starts at 1. Uh, 1.5, 1.5, so all of these uh, all things are matching. 2.5, 2.5, 3, 3, 3.5, 3.5, 4, 4. So we don't have any uh, missing, we don't have any missing bins here. So we wouldn't have to go through the same steps as we did here in order to get this, this uh, missing class. Um, but anyway, so that'll do it for this tutorial.